finally, the answer is collected at B as the product of the incoming messages. So in other words, this message summarizes all the information from over here, and this message summarizes all the information from the rest of the graph. Yes? Would there be any complication if you had another topology? For example, if you have more than one line cutting the vertical axis, which means F2 is dependent on A more than, like if they are interleaved, yes. Like this, for example. Yes, so um, this method will calculate the probability of B exactly, but only if the graph contains no cycles. So here, there's a cycle. A cycle is any path that starts and stops, that, that doesn't that doesn't recur, or doesn't use any edge twice, but still ends up in the same place. Um, so this, this method is, here, there is guaranteed to exist some message passing schedule, some way to pass messages, um, so long as the graph does not contain cycles. So I'm, I'll, I'll state the rules, I'll, I'll boil uh, what we did here down to um, some, some simple rules, and those rules are guaranteed to work as long as the graph contains no cycles. If the graph does contain cycles, all bets are off. Unfortunately, the most interesting cases are the cases where the graph contains cycles. However, the good news is as long as the cycles are big enough, it doesn't seem to matter. No one's entirely sure why, but it does seem to work. Um, so this is kind of like, it helps to visualize it like, okay, you've got, uh, You've got some node in the middle that you want to know all the information about. So B is in the middle, and you've got this crazy factor graph structure out here. And basically, what you want to do is you're collecting all the information. So messages are flowing inward towards the variable that you want. So as long as this is a tree, there's guaranteed to be some percolation towards the middle that, uh, that, will, that will carry all of the summarized information. Furthermore, you'll notice that um, basically each time I pass a message, I cut the graph. So I, I, for instance, once I pass this message to D, then I could forget about everything on this side of the graph. So similarly, when you pass messages in a larger graph, each message inbound contains the complete summarized information over that part of the graph. So at that point, you can forget about that, that, that section of the graph. So the rules in the sum product algorithm work like this. 